Every six months, half of the CentOS Board of Directors is up for re-election. And in January, the CentOS Board selected two new members to fill seats that had opened up at the end of the previous term. One of those new directors was Celeste Lynn Paul, and I had the privilege of speaking with her about how she came to the role and what she hopes to do with her time in that seat. Hi, my name is Rich Bowen. I'm with the Open Source Program Office at Red Hat, and today I have the privilege of interviewing Celeste Lynn Paul, who is one of our two newest additions to the CentOS Project Board of Directors. So thank you for making time for this. Thank you for having me. So I did a little bit of uh, LinkedIn spelunking, and I, I see that you just started a new position at uh, at MITRE, but, but that prior to that, there's like two decades of educational and government roles. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey that brought you to this point? Sure. Um, it's it's a very long and, and storied journey. So I, uh, I actually have uh, several art degrees, which was really informative to the usability and human factors work that I did early in my open source career which was for the KDE project. And that also extended to the Kubuntu project. And so there I helped, uh, I didn't necessarily stand up, but really kicked into gear the usability project with KDE that extended not just to the desktop environment, but we would work with different distributions in order to understand how they were setting default preferences for users to make sure that the KDE experience was what we were working on in the core project. And so that really allowed me to get to know how distributions work, but then also how upstream and downstream kind of interact with each other. Yeah. And it was a really interesting experience because I also got to work with all printer vendors and other types of commercial entities that contribute to open source, but they're not pure open source in a sense, to see how the whole ecosystem worked. And through that professionally, I worked in the user experience and human factors field in the commercial sector for about 10 years. And then I began grad school where I was focused on a PhD in human-centered computing, which is computer science, psychology, and design kind of all munched together where you understand how humans interact with technology and how technology interacts with humans. And it was around that time that I uh, joined the Department of Defense as a computer science researcher, where I did a lot of different types of work looking at um, you know, visualization and analytics. So again, understanding how people interact with technology or use technology to interact with data. And that's kind of where I started getting into cybersecurity and eventually uh, really turned on the cybersecurity bits. And now I'm at the MITRE Corporation where I'm a principal cybersecurity engineer. Again, looking at that intersection between technology mm -hmm. and humans. So you were seated on the board in the January meeting and February, the meeting is what, next week, I guess, on Wednesday. Yes. And um, what do you see as your vision for for the coming year or years on the on the CentOS board? What would you like to see happen in the project? So always near and dear to my heart is user experience and usability. Um, I think the community has come absolute like miles and miles where it was when I first joined the open source community, gosh, 15, 20 years ago, where usability was kind of an unknown word and there was a lot of education yeah. behind it. Yeah. And now everybody knows what usability is, everybody wants user experience, but anytime you introduce new technologies or new workflows, you have to understand how that's going to impact how the users are going to use those new technologies or interact with those new workflows. And so there's always some type of design that needs to be done. And so ensuring that there's a healthy usability and user experience design community is, is always um, something that's close to me. But then also part of that is the business aspect of how upstream and downstream interact with each other, because there are some changes with CentOS and how we'll be interacting with RHEL and also how we interact with Fedora. And so ensuring that we maintain that healthy community and everybody understands what their roles are and how they can contribute, I think, is important for just the longevity of the project. Are there any particular 
uh, special interest groups that you'd like to see come out of that. So in the past, there's been interest in a in a desktop uh, SIG that that was focused on KDE in particular. And is that something that you could get behind? I will always get behind um, anything that has to do with KDE. Um, but for the you know good of CentOS, you know lots of people have different preferences, and whether it's GNOME or whether it's KDE, just ensuring that. Uh, the community is healthy and that we're getting the, the right resources to it. Um, I think that's really what's important here. In addition to your, the obvious parallels from your, from your user interface work, how do you see your experience in education and government um, assisting in this role? I have been a teacher at the university level for many years. And that's something I actually do now. And I find it really interesting because one, it helps me refresh my knowledge of different ways that I can explain technology concepts to people where that's brand new to. But then also it keeps me connected to that part of the learning process. And so I, I continuously see how, you know, new generations of students come in with different knowledge and backgrounds and how we should be introducing some of these design and technology concepts to them. And I think that's really informative so that whenever we're developing new technology, it doesn't get stuck in when I was a kid or when you were a kid, but you know, what is the common ground with users today and how can we make sure that technology, adjust, technology adjusts? Sometimes we give um, younger people too much credit for, oh, well, everybody knows computers if you grew up in this age. Well, they're, they're more open-minded and they're more willing to take risks and make mistakes in order to learn. That's a type of learning or a type of process in order to learn. And when we were, you know, in our teens or in our 20s, we followed those same processes. It's just through experience and through making mistakes or learning alternate methods to adapt and learn new things, we've, we've selected different methods over others. And so by staying connected to people who are learning technology for um, the first time or uh, at a different phase of learning technology, I think it's a good way of refreshing how we should be introducing or designing our systems, not just for the expert users and not just for people who've never seen a computer before, but for the people who are target audience at next generation of CentOS users who we want to choose this distribution and choose these um, technologies and use it for the rest of their careers. Uh, in terms of government, I'll have to say that government has taught me a lot of leadership skills in both business and people management. And so I think just in terms of being able to work with others to bring groups together and to resolve conflicts, that's where I'll be able to draw on a lot of a lot of those things. Thank you so much for, for giving us a little bit of your time. And uh, we wish you just all the best in your, your term on the board and look forward to seeing what you and the new board accomplish in the coming year. Thank you, I'm excited for it.